Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to make a complex extraction. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Ramelli. I'm a French photographer living in Paris, and I'm actually back in Paris after traveling for a few weeks in many places in the US. Pretty happy to be back. I actually make two tutorials per week. All you have to do is click here to subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you will receive from YouTube twice a week my free tutorials. And if you want to get the raw files for this episode and of all the past episodes, click here and subscribe to my newsletter. Let me spam you a little bit with some emails and in exchange you will get raw files from all over the world. Paris, Venice, New York, very good raw files so you can train your Lightroom and Photoshop skills. All right, last week I showed you how I took this photo of a beautiful swimming pool in Florida. It was pretty popular. Check it out if you like this type of effects. This week I'm going to show you how to extract um, my little daughter Marine. This is a photo I took of her about a year ago and I wanted to try and push to the test what uh, the tools of Photoshop can do to extract her and put her on a new background as you can see here. But also I want to warn you at the end of the podcast I'm going to announce a new course that I, I did with Kelvin Pimont on photo restoration and you will see the whole trailer at the end of this podcast. But first, here is a tutorial. This is a tutorial that I did a, a while ago in French but I realized I never did it in English which is about extracting uh, uh, hairs. Uh, I mean extracting uh, somebody when you have a lot of hairs and it's a very hard background. Now this is not an exact science and I still struggle with it but there's a few tips and tricks that I find that works pretty well that I want to show you. I have uh, here a little photo of uh, my beautiful daughter Marine and uh, here I have a background. I want to put her on that background but uh, I'm not going to go into the old composite thing of matching colors. I just want to talk to you about extraction. So first when you extract something for composite I advise you to take your foreground. Uh, I'm going to use the move tool uh, here. Oh, I have some problems with my windows. Yeah. And I'm just going to click on, on the image, go to that tab, press shift to make sure that it's, uh, it's centered. And I'm going to put that background layer on the back. Okay. You will understand why in a second. Then I'm going to go here and take the quick selection tool using the um, alt and control key. I can make it bigger or smaller. First, I'm going to make it rather large and I'm just going to, you know, I'm just going to click and brush on uh, my daughter. Okay, now on this part you see it's selected the whole right part. I don't want that. So you press the Alt key and the brush becomes a minus. Amazing. And now you brush and it takes out what was not selected. And then, so I can zoom in and now make something a bit more precise. So press W to get the tool back. Use Alt and Control to make it smaller. Okay, now here I don't want this to be selected so I'm going to press Alt. It becomes a minus. And I'm selecting this, all right. Okay, plus, I just, and you have to make it as best as you can. Now, obviously, I'm gonna make this a bit bigger, minus, I don't want this to be selected. This is really hard because there is, I mean, this is really a hard selection photo because there's a lot of hairs and uh, the background is, uh, there's not such a difference with the background because of the shadows. So it's a pretty, pretty rough one. Okay, so that's the best I could do so far. Now we have to go to uh, make sure that you are on the quick select tool on the refine edge. Now on refine edge, there is different type of viewing what you're doing. Uh, the first one, this one I've been using is on layers. On layers, you can see the background. And actually, actually that's a very good one uh, to work with because you can see in real time if, if what you're doing is going to be realistic or not. Then you have on, on black, on white, now you can see the selection is really bad around the hairs. And uh, you have margin ant, which is completely useless. And you have overlay. Now, I always start in overlay mode because in overlay mode, I can see what is selected and what is not. If I go on black, I can only see what is selected. I don't really see what's not selected. Something on white, something on layers. Overlay, you can see both better. That's what I find. So I would advise you to start with overlay. So first thing, you have a brush. That brush, you can make big or small. Same thing, using the Control and Alt key and moving and left clicking and moving your mouse. So I'm going to make it a little big and I'm just going to brush where there is some hairs. Okay. 
I'm going to brush where there is some hairs and I hope that the magic of Adobe Photoshop is going to operate. Let's see. Bam, bam, bam. Hey, not so bad. Now you can see here there is some red that should not be selected. So same thing, you can do minus and just, you know, brush away and uh, sort of refine what was done. Okay, it doesn't always work. It's funny because the first time, it's the first time it does this to me. It's pretty random. So, okay, I'm going to do it again. All right. Sometimes you have to do it with the plus and the minus doesn't do the trick. Okay, so now on red, it kind of looks cool. Now here, if you look at his on, on her t-shirt, it's not very cool the way it's selected. So you can go to smart radius and that's going to take care of that and put in like one or two pixel. And that's, you see how it corrected. It, it did already a, a better job there. Okay, so on red, it looks cool. Now let's check out on black. You see on black, it's not very nice because you can, it makes something very weird around the, the hairs. On white, on white, it's pretty clean, except here, it's not so clean here. I can see that it did select something which was not the hairs. And if I look on layers, which is what we were looking for, it's actually pretty good. And that's one, that's my first trick is, you can get away with a lot of mistake on this because depending on the background you're going to use, you see, it, it works on that background. I mean, it kind of look, looks weird because the, the hair, she was laying on, on the bed, so the hair looks really big. But it's fine. It's just to show you how to put her on the background. Now, can we improve this a little bit, especially for the black background? Let's say that your background would be black, you know. Yes, we can improve it a little bit. First, let's see if we can take care of that. No, it doesn't want to go away. Let's see, see with the minus, if I can, minus brush, is it going to go? It's pretty random. Sometimes it works, some, see it doesn't work. It actually added more. So I can press command Z to undo that. This I will take care a bit later on. What I'm interested mostly is actually on, um, on black here. You can see that we really have a lot of, you know, hairs, which looks really weird all around. So if my background was really dark, my composite would be totally messed up. So one thing you can do is the shift edge option. If you go left, what it does is that it makes your selection smaller. And if you go right, it makes it bigger. Left, right. I'm exaggerating. So you can see if you, uh, I would do, you know, like something like this. Shift the, yeah, a minus 18. Just, you know, look at it. You, you're not going to get it perfect because uh, uh, if, honestly, this, this wouldn't work if my background would be completely black. But anyway, I'm going to go like minus 20. It's still a bit better. Um, decontaminate colors sometimes can help. Decontaminate colors. Just You have to look if it does something on the blacks. If it doesn't, don't use it because it can do some weird stuff. Check it out before and after. No, don't use it. It's making everything uh, uh, out of colors. Okay, that's as far as I can go on this. I don't think I will. With that tool, I don't think I can do a little better. Better. Uh, let's see on white. It looks pretty cool uh, And on layers on the layers. I think it looks pretty awesome. Let's check it out So you see on layers, it's actually pretty awesome I mean it looks good, but you know, there will be times when you will be uh, really uh, bothered with this So I want to show you uh, how we can improve that. I don't think we'll get really far away, but uh, We can improve it. So now uh, all I'm going to do is Output to new, uh, no, to not a new layer, layer mask. All I want is a layer mask. Click on OK and boom. So here you have a layer mask. It looks kind of cool. Now, once you've done this, usually you have to zoom in. And uh, what I usually do is I first press the Alt key to just see the mask. Uh, B for brush. Make sure my brush is uh, harness at about 50%. Make sure it's white. 100%, 100% flow and opacity. And I'm just going to brush in places. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put the harness even more, like 80%. Because if you have a, a harness which is very low, like 0 or 10, it's going to make a, a very um, subtle, you know, it's going to make a, a very feather around the brush and it's going to do some bad things. Okay, that looks kind of cool. All right. And so, yeah, you, you always have to, you know, you have to sort of improve, uh, improve your, your mask with your, you know, if there's anything that's wrong there, I could improve it directly on the mask. Now, I want to show you a technique uh, to, to, to better the hair. So for this, I'm going to create a new layer that I'm going to fill with black. So edit, 
just so you see what I'm doing, fill with black. Okay, and now we can, we're going to see if we can do some improvement on this. Uh, first of all, I'm going to command click on the mask to get my selection back and then press command J. That's going to put uh, that's going to put her on the on her own layer uh, without a mask. You know, it's around. If you look at it, if I press the alt key and click on it, uh, you see it's it's transparent all around her. OK, and if I just uh, holding the alt key and I re click on the eye, it's bringing everything back. So I show it to you again. You press the alt key, you click. It makes that layer visible and you click again and on that layer, everything is back. All right. So couple of two techniques I know how to improve this. The first one is, uh, but it only work. It doesn't work if you've got a mask. You've got to have no mask. So, so that's what we have now. It's you go to layers, matting, defringe, and defringe one pixel, not more. And what that does is that it takes a lot of this little hairy stuff away. Sometimes it's not good before, after, before, after, before, after. On this one, it could be cool. Honestly, I would check it like, like this, before, after, before, after. I think, yeah, I would do it. I would do it on this one. So let's do it. Okay, and the other trick that I know, uh, and that's a cool one, is you go to FX, Inner Shadow. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do uh, an inner shadow around her. So, uh, okay, I'm gonna make this first 100% black. Make sure size is pretty big at first. And you see, if you move around, it makes a shadow around her. All I want is dark and all these small hairs. Something like that. That looks kind of cool. Maybe make get the size even be bigger. All right. It's a shadow, so it's not full force. And then you just lower the opacity until you've got something that you like. Something like that. Now, you see, the result is not perfect here. Honestly, for me, it's not even usable on a black. But this was a really hard photo. A very hard one. Now... What happens with this technique is that sometimes the inner shadow, you only want it to be on the hairs. You don't want it to be on the clothes or some other part of her body. In this case, so the inner shadow is affected everywhere. First, you have to duplicate the layer. Okay, so now I have got twice the same layer. And what I can do on the top layer, I can right click and rasterize layer style. What that does, is that now it's not a style anymore that's being applied, but the, the shadow has been, you know, has been printed hard copy onto the layer. It's printed in the photo. Okay, once you have rasterized, what you need to do is get that inner shadow out. So uh, disable layer effect. So now uh, this photo does not have the inner shadow. This one has the inner shadow everywhere, but it's on, uh, it has been printed in the photo, so I can just add a mask now. And let's say I wanted to take out the inner shadow on the on the left side. I can take a black brush and, uh, well, make sure it's harness at zero. And, you know, I could just take the shadow if I want it on this side. Okay, of course, here it's not very applicable. But, you know, let's say, oops, I wanted to take it out. Oh, what am I doing? Hold on. Let's say I wanted to take it out here because there was a shadow over here. You know, I wanted only the effect to be on the hairs. Now, you see on black, it doesn't look very good. But uh, if I take out the black layers, on the final one, it looks pretty cool, except this little thing here. Okay, now I have to erase. There was some stuff I forgot to erase before. I should have taken care of it on the mask before doing that. You see here, uh, I can just take a, uh, an eraser, make sure it's at 100%, 100%. I'm just going to erase that. Okay, but the, the final result is pretty cool. On black, it doesn't look awesome, but on, on what I wanted to put it on, it looks pretty cool. And uh, But this is really a very rough case. She's got lots of hairs. It was not a good lighting. There was not enough contrast. But it's just to show you, you know, some tips and tricks on extracting. And uh, anyways, this file is for you um, to download for free if you subscribe to my newsletter. So you can give it a try and see for yourself with the amazing hairs of my daughter. Voila, let's get back to me. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Sergio Amelie. I'm a French photographer, and I'm very happy to announce that I have a new course coming on my store. But for the first time, this course is not done by me, but my friend and partner, Kelvin Pimont. He's actually, Kelvin is a guy that got me into photo photography about 10 years ago. He's been a Photoshop guru for over 20 years, 
even though he's very young, he started very young. And for many years, he worked for a company in LA that was restoring very old photo. And that's a pretty po popular topic, is how to restore very old photo. So let me present you Kelvin, and he's gonna explain you what you're gonna learn in this course. It's an awesome one, and let me tell you that your Photoshop skills is gonna go from this to this when you follow this course. It's easy to use, easy to learn, all you have to do is follow the steps. Here is Kelvin. Hi guys, and welcome to this photo restoration course. My name is Kelvin, and I'm gonna take you through how to restore old archival photographs. We have three projects. The first project is an old photo of a horse and chariot from a photographer from the late 1800s. And we scan this in, it's in three pieces, and we're gonna stitch it back together and slowly but surely put all the detail back into that photo, clean up all the dust and particles. And this is the before, and this is the after. So you see that there's a quite an awesome improvement. In the second project, we have a photo of a soldier, and it's very washed out because it's quite old, and I actually don't really know where it's from, but we found it in a, a flea market. And we scan it in and we restore it, getting a lot of detail back in there. And we actually add a little bit of sky, maintaining the integrity of the original photo. And here you can see the before, and here's the after. So you can see we really got that photo back to how uh, it can be. And in the third project, which is a bit of a bonus project, there is a photo restoration involved, but we're taking some real creative liberties here. And you can see the before here and the after here. So you see there's quite a marked difference and it's a lot of fun. You'll see there's a lot of things you learn along the way, uh, a lot of little tricks and tips and all kinds of new techniques that you probably don't know. I hope you enjoy this course and I hope to see you soon. Au revoir. All right, guys, I hope you liked the tutorial and that you're going to check out this new course on photo restoration. You will learn tons of stuff in Photoshop. I learned a lot. So thank you for being there every week, and I'll see you in the next episode. Au revoir.